Okay, so question 18, stripes, stripes. So let's see what's going on here. So stripes, we have, um, <clears throat> the first question I think was, I don't know, I think I've written the question. Please look at the question. I, I actually thought I'd copied the question into this, into this, but you would, you would know what the question is because the, the question wants us to talk about the difference between deviation and misstatement. And um, deviation is really to do with controls. So really, I suppose, by virtue of what deviation means, it, the controls are not doing what they ordinarily claim that they do. Um, and so what we're trying to do is to identify and review those differences or those variations or those deviances um, whilst we're performing these tests of controls. The key test of control is a walkthrough. So we're actually walking through a system, observing, inquiring, inspecting documentation and to see if it's doing what it says and inspecting exceptions things along those lines so as opposed to misstatement a misstatement the lovely thing about misstatement is we were very clear about the financial reporting framework we were very clear that there is a i suppose you could argue in a way that there is a deviation from the relevant financial reporting framework so but we shouldn't don't use the word deviation just say that there are differences it's not quite the same. And I suppose the whole argument is really um, you can have a difference due to fraud or error, um, usually due to error, or just a difference in opinion in terms of judgment. Um, but typically, I think error covers that whole area of disagreement. That whole area of disagreement. Okay. Um, so Typically, of course, that's the whole point of an audit um, to carry out these substantive tests to identify identify misstatements. And I believe the next question, because there is a delay between when I record this and do them, um, the next question is to do with what those assertions were. I think they wanted a few assertions. Um, remember that I did ACCA cover was what I. ACCA cover. And remember that the assertions for the statement of financial position um, don't, don't exactly mean that there's the same for the statement of profit or loss, right? So um, transactions and events. So these are actually events taking place. So this is the statement of profit or loss because it says transactions and events. So it's an event happening. Um, so occurrence of course is what we're looking at here it's, it's these events that occurred like revenue cut off of course they are accruals in that period completeness that everything on there is there um then we have accuracy um presentation and classification so i think i think that's kind of all right i think you you would have been safe with that the, the whole idea is that you look at a number on the statement of profit or loss like revenue and what are you expecting that number to be complete that the events there did occur um that the figures are accurate <clears throat> and um that all the figures are in, that are in there are in that period right so that's the, the whole thing about um that's the whole thing about um, um completeness and cut off Right, so it says that um, in January X5, they introduced a new accounting software that had some more functionality um, for contract accounting. So they, they ran these systems parallel. So there's a risk here for one month before the old systems were shut down. So th the question here is that for completeness, we need to make sure that all the data on the old system was transferred safely to the new system because there's the, the, the risk is that there are going to be gaps. And that's the key point, right? That there are going to be gaps in that transfer process or that the new system isn't quite working and is still missing out on data the point is you have a break in system so it's really important to to make sure that you get that transfer so it's really a matter of completeness here and of course other things accuracy and of course but um so i suppose the question here is that the best way to look at it right is that you would accept that the opening balances of the new system should align with the closing balances of the old system. It's like any system, really, isn't it? Like maybe you're using Sage and then you're now changing on to QuickBooks and you're starting a new year. You want to make sure that the opening balances here are, yeah, cool, great. Then it tells us to review internal audit reports. Um, well, this was, 
is this one review internal order reports to, i think understanding the system i think is the point so however you decide to discuss an understanding of the system or the issues with transfer of data and dealing with any exceptions or dealing with any issues um, and then trying to understand how they kept on as you would have expected running some kind of parallel system just to make sure because i think it's slightly dangerous to totally stop one system and move on to the next it, there is some safety in continuing with the old system running parallel to the new system um i've written here the same very similar understanding the new system documentation and performing a walkthrough to to to, to understand the system um, again, documenting the new system via flowcharts, narrative notes, um, and then testing that system with um, test data. So you, you're, you're trying to test the integrity of the system, throwing dummy data at it to see whether or not it works, um, it, it to ensure the controls are working at each stage. Um, yeah, and probably I may, might not have put that, that last one personally, in, when I think about it now, but at the time I was writing, looking at management, um, if there were any new and whether there were any problems there. Right. OK, great stuff. Then we go on to discuss a few focused issues, um, contract liabilities. So it says here that furniture takes between one and three months to manufacture, um, um, depending on the size of the of the item, um, depending on the size of the item furniture takes place between yes so customers are required to play a 40 percent deposit when placing the order which covers the design the, the the deposit so really this is deferred income the point here is this it just says that you have a job to do you haven't quite finished so you can't quite recognize it as, as revenue it says the deposit is recognized as a contract liability until the performance obligation is fulfilled so even if you don't know if, if you have if you haven't done any financial reporting before it doesn't matter the point here is you cannot recognize that income until the um the, the furniture the job is complete and then you get the 60 percent. so the key point is you cannot recognize this 40 percent as revenue so there's a risk here that revenue um has been that revenue might be overstated right? there's that risk here that revenue might be overstated um so what have i written here assertions are around completeness as it is a liability so and um Yes, so, so we're, we're suppose completeness from the point of view of recognizing the full liability and not going debit bank um, credit revenue. Yes, so we don't want. So I suppose you could argue, and it might be the overstatement of revenue. I'll take that, or the completeness of liability. I suppose you could write both. That's the risk here, isn't it? Anyway, key point here is that we want to make sure this is the journal that's been put through, and we don't have. Um, we have the full liability being recognized by the year end. That's actually, that's why I think, I think I went with completeness because what we don't have is to be recognizing revenue. So again here, accuracy, occurrence. <clears throat> yeah, so the key point, like I said here, is that um, the, 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 the risk here is that, is that you don't, people aren't recognizing co that contract liability. So we want to ensure that all, um, the fact that you've got money in the bank and as that whenever you um, receive that money at the year end um, you're recognizing the full contract liability at that point that's the point really that you're recognizing that contract liability at the at the year end I think that's really the point isn't it at the, at the year end getting a list of all those contract liabilities and ensuring that's what we're really trying to do here um, it really are we recognizing contract liability at the year end as contract liability um, and not as as income so yeah and then also we, yeah i've got here agree a, a sample of deposit payments into the cash and bank statements so that's fine right so um again i'm just repeating myself a sample of contracts in progress um, agree the appropriate contract liability amount into the breakdown to confirm completeness and um, again again that's all we're really doing ensuring that that separation there 
The last question, I think both of them are lovely questions. Um, during the audit, they performed um, some evidence. They observed that contract liabilities were understated and revenue were overstated. So this is really the issue, isn't it? Um, and so they spent time testing the new system and no material misstatements. So two points here, contract liabilities and then the new system. Um, and it says here, and they, they identified no material misstatement um, and they've discussed this in full. So what should you do? So we know here that this misstatement, you calculate, always calculate the, the, um, the, the change on profitability. It is material and therefore it should be adjusted. It should be adjusted anyway. Um, it is material, but this is, it's, it's isolated. It's, it's, it's material, but not pervasive. And this is a misstatement. So you will give a qualified opinion if they don't change it, right? So if they don't amend this, it'll be modified. The audio opinion will be modified. What is the paragraph simply saying? Well, it'll be qualified except for, right? And you will explain the basis for the qualified opinion, the, the paragraph. That's it, really. Um, that's what we're going to do. In terms of the accounting statement, what I thought was interesting here was that, remember when I was teaching this, I explained that, um, one, they are a, a listed company. This is something I should have picked up, said, mentioned at the beginning. Because they are a listed company, um, and we know, we, we started the year knowing that they had this new system, it would have been a key audit matter, right? It would have been a key audit matter. So we know it was a key audit matter. So it should come under key audit matters. And we should talk about, in the key audit matter, we're talking about what the issue is and what tests, what additional tests we have done to manage the process, right? So it's a key audit matter. Um, and and it, 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 it would have required us to, to discuss this and understand what was going on. We would have known about this um, at the beginning of the year. We would have planned to a lot of work on it so it's not really so much about whether or not there is a um it is um modified or unmodified it's just and i think this is a good question because it means that we're not we're thinking outside the box not only thinking about qualification or modification we're thinking about um, paragraphs key paragraphs that should go in into the um um unmodified opinion sort of um, report Right, great stuff. And that's question, and that's question 18.